Hello, everyone. This is the Planning, Building, and Zoning Committee for the Village of Hoffman Estates on September 14th, 2020. May we have a roll call, please? Chairman Stanton. Present. Vice Chairman Arnett. Present. Trustee Mills. Present. Trustee Newell. Present. Trustee Palafas. Present. Trustee Gaeta. Present. Mayor McClellan. Present. Thank you. We have a quorum. Looking for approval of the minutes of August 3rd, 2020. So moved. Second. Anybody notice any corrections or deletions that need to be made? Hearing and seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Now we need approval of the minutes of September 8th, 2020. So moved. Second. Thank you. Tie for second. Uh, anybody notice any corrections that need to be made on those? Hearing and seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Leads us to new business. First, request by Hoffman Alpha Omega Development Group. Could you make your name any longer? <laughs> LLC for a courtesy review to redevelop the vacant building at 2575 West Higgins Road, the gas station, convenience store, and restaurants. Who wants to uh, come forward? Good evening. My name is Jennifer Lasota, and I'm with Hoffman Alpha Omega Development Group. And um, we are the development arm of the Hoffman companies. Um, also with me is um, Mike, Mike, uh, oh, <laughs> it is, uh, Michael Caldwell. He's the principal from Caldwell Engineering, who's a civil engineer um, for the proposed project. Excuse and me, would you get closer to that microphone? Pardon? Would you get closer to that mic? There you that. go. Is that good? Yeah, okay. much better. And uh, Mr. Fred Hoffman, um, who is the managing member of the Hoffman um, Alpha Omega Development Group um, and is also the owner of a la carte entertainment. Um, a la carte um, entertainment was formed and founded in 1970 when it began with a single location called the Snuggery. Nearly 50 years later, Mr. Hoffman and his son Mark oversee over a thousand employees at restaurants and nightclubs, including Finn McCool's, Freddy's, um, Famous Freddy's Roadhouse, Lion Head, uh, Lucky Star, Sweet Caroline's, Carbon Q, The Apartment, Excalibur, and Moretti's restaurants. We're here tonight to discuss the proposed redevelopment of the property located at 2575 West Higgins Road. The subject property is um, 84,327 square feet and is part of a five lot subdivision, which originally included five restaurants, Lone Star, TGIF, Macaroni Grill, Steak and Shake, and Max and Irma's. Four of the five restaurants, Max and Irma's, Lone Star, TGIF, and Macaroni Grill have closed down. Currently, Hoffman a la carte entertainment owns four of the five Restu former restaurants. That's 80% of the restaurant in that restaurant ca campus. The former Max and Irma's has become Moretti's restaurant. Um, the former Lone Star is now Moretti's unique events. We're asking, or we're currently under negotiation with a cannabis company to occupy the former TGIF restaurant. And we're here before you tonight to talk about the old Macaroni Grill restaurant. The property is located west of the subdivision. Um, the property located west of the subdivision is the existing Burger King, um, which you might recall was previously a Shell gas station. Um, and it, um, up until it was closed um, when Higgins was widened and they lost the fuel dispensers, um, which basically took them out of operation. To the east is the existing Moretti's restaurant. To the southeast is the Moretti's Unique Events. To the south is the old TGIF. Um, and to the southeast, uh, southwest is the Steak and Shake. Um, the five lot subdivision is accessed by a single private circulation road, um, which bisects the parcels and winds through the subdivision. Which, <laughs> We can get into that a little more. And um, it extends from Higgins Road to Barrington Road. And it's unique in its um, way that it provides access to all five parcels, allowing direct access from Higgins and Barrington Roads without having to have direct access from IDOT. Um, and 
It's ideal from a safety perspective um, as cars are not crossing over many lanes of traffic to enter the sites. Um, as you remember, we may or may not, we, we were um, previously came before the board and introduced the project um, late last year. Um, since then, we've taken um, the comments that we received from the board, um, as well as um, the comments from the village and refined our site plan. We studied the grade elevations um, on both on and off site. Um, and um, in order to make sure that the building was not sitting in a hole. Um, we've engaged um, KLOA, our um, traffic consultant, to review the access, the traffic, the parking, um, and the existing conditions on site. Uh, US Oil has um, studied the site um, and prepared a uh, preliminary um, gasoline volume study um, for the site. Um, they looked at the existing conditions and existing co competition in the area to come up with the exact volume that they project that the site will do. Uh, DeVita Landscape looked at um, all of the existing conditions on the site, made recommendations, um, looked at the code for the village, and um, has created a landscape plan for the property. DMA Architects has done a study um, and created um, perspectives to show the um, visibility, sight lines of the property and how it, um, what you would see when you were dr driving down Higgins. Um, so we can look at the grades with respect to that. Um, Caldwell Engineering prepared a memorandum explaining the differences in the site plan that we've presented today versus what was presented back in, um, at the end of last year. I'm gonna let Michael take over and kind of discuss the site plan. Right away, I noticed that you already have uh, two ingress and egresses, is that right? That is, that is correct. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I'm happy to entertain any other questions that you may have at this time, or do you want me to present? I'll go ahead and present. Okay, great. Um, we prepared a site plan uh, towards the end of last year, 2019, uh, and then that was submitted to uh, the village. And subsequent to that, the uh, village planning staff has uh, reviewed uh, the site plan, and we've uh, taken the time and making sure make and made sure that the uh, development was functional as well as meeting uh, the requests of the uh, planning staff and I, I would assume that and also the engineering staff and uh, as I believe the trustees had made comments uh, as well so I can just I don't want to go belabor all of the points, but I can briefly discuss them. You're gonna need to have a microphone. I understand, I'm just moving this closer. Can you see that? While you're doing that, uh, I've been reminded that you, there's a statement of understanding here. Do you understand, and this is I guess for <coughs> everyone here uh, on behalf of the group, that you understand that your appearance before the Planning, Building, and Zoning Committee shall not constitute any village board endorsement, support, or implied approval of the subject property. Do you also understand that the project approval or denial shall only occur through official village board action? Yeah, we understand that. Okay. <coughs> okay. Um, one of the items uh, that was uh, uh, discussed with the uh, planning staff was the access to and from the site. What, uh, what we've done uh, in conjunction with our, um, our traffic consultant and internal review has, we have developed a, a, a uh, flow through the site. So uh, all, all traffic as well as delivery vehicles of, uh, for the restaurants as well as for the fuel uh, can access the site very easily. What we've done, what we've done is we've made sure uh, that truck traffic can come through here. They'll be able to back up and fuel at this location 
and then continue on without any, any backup or, or any other uh, uh, obstruction through the site. So it's a very clear and easy and quick uh, way to uh, access the site. Uh, I'm going to stop you right there for a second. I thought it was our understanding that there weren't going to be any trucks going into this gas station. Well, you have to deliver it with the, with the okay. truck. Okay, yeah, delivery-wise. Yes. Okay. So that we have to provide access for that. And so we've actually done an analysis and presented that to the, the planning staff that shows that you can access the site either coming from Higgins Road or from the private drive. They could come up Barrington and come through the private drive, either one. And likewise, they could exit either way. One of the other main items that we would like to discuss is that previously uh, we had shown uh, more than one uh, drive-through. We've limited, we've uh, modified the plan to just have one drive-through. We felt it was more streamlined and uh, serviced uh, the development uh, better. The other item that uh, we also want to discuss was uh, visibility. As you can see in the packet that we were provided, or that we've provided, is we have the analysis from the uh, from the architect that shows, this, sh this shows what the elevations are above Higgins Road. So there's actually, as you drive by Higgins Road, you'll be able to see very clearly the, uh, the gas station. As you, drive, as you drive through, the, the elevation of the site is actually six to eight feet lower than, than the elevation of the most extreme point of Higgins Road. Uh, as you go to the west, it goes to you know, very, a very low change in elevation, change in grade. But with the construction of the, um, uh, of the canopy, you'll be able to see that quite easily. In addition, uh, we anticipate that we should be provide, we will be providing the same or similar landscaping as we have to the east and to the west. If you take a look at Burger King, there is very little high landscaping that blocks off the, the visual of the, of the building. And also if you go to the west, e to the east of the site, to the Moretti's, you can see the you can see the Moretti's quite easily. Uh, currently, the site has both uh, canopy trees on on the site as well as on the roadway, and so we would anticipate that those would be uh, modified so we could actually see them coming from the coming from the. Uh, west as you travel west to east. Um, uh, and so I'm here basically to entertain any questions that you have with regard to any engineering matters or site issues. Trustee Mills. Yeah, a couple things. In your building there, mm -hmm. all right, you've got a convenience store and then it says fast food. Correct. And what's the furthest on the, uh, at the other end, yeah. This is gonna be the drive-through restaurant. Then, so, there, so it's two separate restaurants then? Well, okay. The, um, originally when we first came in, um, the plan had the buildings separated. We've since combined the buildings and have um, looked at um, doing the uses. Um, we're currently laying everything out, but it, what, it, what we're going to be doing is having the convenience store, and then um, within the convenience store, adjacent to it, there would be, with, it's a flow-through process. So you'd have the convenience store on one side, 
be able to walk clearly from one spot to the other, but then there would be the ordering stations for all the different uses. So there's really not a clear defined um, line going through the buildings creating separate uses. Okay. It's more like counter spaces so that you could order and then there will be one drive through window where um, all of the uses would be able to facilitate okay. the drive through window. Where do you envision the uh, video poker to be then? Um, it will be within, it's off within the space, but it will be separated. So it's not, uh, we, how we have them currently laid out is that there's the counter and then there's a little wing wall and in that it's separated okay. from it so that there's okay. a, a space for them. All right. Would that be in the convenience store? Um, it is, I'm not sure if we, did we, it's right, yes. It is by the convenience, in, in the, within the convenience store area. Okay. Okay. Can I ask a couple other things? Um, sure. Okay. Um, now you realize they're building another convenience store just a half a block away. I do. Okay. Do you have any idea who would be having this convenience store? Yes. Um, I can, I'll um, speak a little bit towards that. Um, basically we have, um, we have looked at, I think Michael kind of went through how we've laid out the site. Mm -hmm. And um, at this point we, you know, we, we took a look at what we had previously, what we were looking at, and when everything kind of turned upside down with COVID, we kind of looked at um, our plan and the uses and kind of refined it a little bit. And um, as you're well aware that COVID has kind of upset the entire development world, and we think it's gonna continue to do that for some time. Um, the retail restaurant industry um, has been one of the sectors that's basically been most affected by COVID-19. Um, full service restaurants um, without the drive-throughs, carry out, delivery, pickup catering capacity really um, have not been able to survive um, or are you know, pretty much shut down. Um, and so luckily, I think that you know, Mr. Hoffman has positioned himself quite well with being able to have a lot of those components within his restaurants. Um, the proposed uses for this property will include sustainable, what we believe will be sustainable commercial uses that are considered essential businesses um, or will fall within that. So a gas station is a, cons is a essential business. The drive-through, by not separating the, um, the um, food from the fuel, um, we will have the ability for people to still be able to walk within there, safely so social distance, and then we still have the, um, the drive-through facility that they can order their foods from. The, um, the um, let's see, Circle K will be the brand for the C store. Um, the fueling will be branded um, Amico. Um, a la carte will be branding um, their food concept called Buddy's Beef. And um, we will be um, participating and partnering with Gloria Jean's um, coffee to um, be serving the coffee specialty within the facility. Um, so I think that those are the uses and how they will um, you know, be functioning within right. the space. Just, just one other thing, is, is there any thought of Possibly Let me talk about the traffic a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. less than 20 islands. It just seems like Can you a little bit of sorry? overkill having that many gas pumps out there. Um, we don't we want it to look like, you know, and, and I know Hoffman's do a great facilities. They, they do wonderful projects. This is definitely something different for them, but we don't want it to look like a truck stop type atmosphere, you know, where it's all gas pumps in front and I was just wondering if there was any thought of possibly putting that down slightly from 20. Just a thought. Well, we, um, we have, and I think we included in the package, we've engaged US Oil to, um, and they are partnering with us on this. Right. So they are, um, and they looked at this and they've run the volumes based on that. I mean, we can go back and ask them if there's any possibility and what, how that would affect mm -hmm. the numbers Might on it overall. Might more room for, for vehicle pa uh, traffic and that too on the site. Well, I mean, the circulation does work and I don't know if bringing it down by two pumps is gonna, or dispensers will actually make that much of a difference from a circulation mm -hmm. standpoint. But I believe that 
you know, right now the numbers are what they're projected to be. We can certainly look at, is that something that we can go back and look at? Um, but um, again, it's gonna come down to whether or not, um, you know, the numbers work still. Yeah, I understand so, that, but it was just a thought. Right, okay. right. We Thank can, you. We can look at that. Um, yep, I think, sure, one more thing that I, I think I'll have, oh yeah, Michael, you can come back and then he'll close. I just wanted to uh, discuss your question with regard to the convenience store that's across the street. I'm sure uh, you are, are, are very uh, familiar with this. You've probably heard, uh, you've probably even heard our traffic consultant uh, discuss it, uh, Michael Worthman of KLOA. Uh, you know, we often uh, discuss things together in front of, in front of boards and, and the Village of Hoffman Estates is very experienced with regard to this. And uh, most of the uses on this site would be considered convenience uses. And I'm sure that you're aware that most convenience uses will take somewhere between 60 and 70 percent of the of the of the users of the site uh, for the convenience uses. Those would be people that are already traveling in the same direction. They're not going to necessarily be people that say, "Oh, well, there's a gas station over there." If I'm traveling, if I'm traveling westbound on Higgins, they're probably not going to be going here. The people that are travel, they're going to be using the site, are the people that are traveling uh, eastbound on Higgins. And I believe, did you already discuss it? But no, I didn't. But you know. Yeah, the, 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 the only, uh, it goes from Route 47, 16 miles to the west, is, is a gas station. And the next fueling station, you know, that's, that's even, I don't know how far, how far east. It's probably someplace in Schaumburg. Golf and Roselle? Golf and Higgins. Oh yeah, Golf and Higgins, correct. Mm -hmm. So uh, we feel that it's, and I'm sure Jen can talk to that, that, uh, uh, that this is going to be a convenience use. Uh, so there's no, I don't think, it, according to our traffic consultant, uh, they're probably not going to be uh, that much competition between them. We'll have different users. Uh, the only other use that we have is the restaurant use will be probably a destination use. But although, given its uh, uh, drive-through right now, it's probably generally going to be a convenience use as well at this time. You know you have on here, <coughs> excuse me, uh, for fuel estimates, unbranded versus major brand. Obviously, you're saying you're bringing in a major brand. Correct. So the numbers that we have here for major brand are the ones that you would be using. Is that right? That's correct. <clears throat> and when when they um, again when they run the numbers, they look at competition in the area as well. So to the point of um, you know re recognizing that there is competition in the area, we we realize that. But I think a big advantage for us is that you know we are going to be um, that first you know, from 47 traveling on Higgins, um, we're the first gas station that you're gonna hit the, in, in a matter of 16 miles. So um, we, uh, we do think that there um, is a need for it and our, based on the volumes that we have received from our consultant, we, um, they, they confirm that that is and um, based on what they're looking at. Now there are gas stations at Higgins in around 25, as I recall. <clears throat> now I don't know if they're on the east side. I think they might be going on the west side, but yeah, they're on the opposite side. Correct. Still, there are gas stations there, and you are obviously aware of that. But we are. But um, the patterns, what we look at when we're looking at the the gas stations and the um, the people's habits, um, they look people. Typically won't cross over that traffic. They'll either wait till they go there. You know, the, it's either the first location that you're going to hit on your way to work, or you're going to hit it on your way home from work. Uh, they don't typically cross over the traffic to get there because it's time constraints and convenience and everything else. So um, they, they again, that's all factored in when we look at the numbers and and the projections. Now my understanding is is also that you're going to have like at least two pumps for electric cars. Um, they will have. I'm not sure of the number of them. 
Is it two? It is two, two yes. Parking two parking, correct. Would they be with these pumps or are they a different location? I think they're in different locations is what they're going to be. I, I, we have not pinpointed the exact location of them, but we can refine that and let you know where they're at. Sure. Uh, I counted about 45 parking spaces. Was I right? There's or actually 53, if I'm not mistaken. Hang on one second. I can tell you that. I'm missing eight know. then, <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> um, there are a total of 53, 51 and two handicapped. Okay. okay. Right, that's not including the pumps, which you know, there's always a question whether you include that because people typically you know, will fuel up and they'll leave their car, sit there and run in and grab something. But, you know, so, but the, the actual spaces themselves okay. is 53 total. If you eventually make it back here for a final uh, and go through all the uh, planning zoning committee, uh, yeah, we can go through all the, the parking spaces and you can show me where they are at that okay. time. Anyone else? Uh, yes, Trustee Palafas. Yeah, I have a similar, I have a similar question um, as Trustee Mills. The, um, the gas pumps, are those all dual pumps in like five separate carousels? The 10 pumps, they're dual? They are. So it's two pumps six. per, Correct. I don't know what to call them, carousels, yeah. islands? Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, the reason I was asking is, you know, for the same question, is like Ricky Rockets is pretty wide, mm -hmm. and they have seven. Uh, one of them is dual, uh, which is, you know, two pumps. Not to, not to mention two sides to two pumps. One of them is like race car fuel, which I don't know if anybody uses, but, um, you know, I, in comparison, you know, I I have the same concern about, you know, the uh, the curb appeal, if you will. And, um, and just kind of comparing uh, your picture versus, you know, the Google Maps picture of today. And it looks like the islands are going to be really close to Higgins. Uh, so you can get the maximum of the setback, correct? Um, Michael, do you know the distance? Like when, it, when I look at this picture. Right. I, I, you, the benefit for the cameras can't see. Right. This is right on to Higgins. So... Um, it is actually, I mean, yeah. it could be the perspective that's showing in it. I, I don't know off the top of my head the exact distance, but we can yeah. probably. Um, well, like you today, you actually, can barely see Macaroni Grill's building. Yeah. You almost wouldn't even know a building's <laughs> there in full bloom. If I could see this, I could <laughs> tell you exactly what it is. It's um, 30. So like a 35. 30 something. So your setback's 35? Right. Uh, no, well, it's no, see the, it's more than that. This is oh, okay. It's 10 feet to the... Okay, so 48 foot two. Okay. Step back from Higgins. Okay. Okay. From That's the, a lot different the than the picture looks to me. Oh, from the my, property line. My uncalibrated eye. Yeah. Um, but, okay, that was my only questions. Thanks, Gary. Plus then there's... That's not from the actual road, because then there's the actual landscape area in there as mm -hmm. well. So, mm -hmm. okay. okay. That's from our property line. Understood. You figured out where you'd want to put your snow? <laughs> Um, okay, yeah, in the landscape area. <laughs> okay. Anyone else on the board that will? The One more. Is, the Sorry. site is large enough that uh, the surrounding area that I believe there is area there that we can also use for that. Okay. Um, that we have due to owning the other properties. My only other question was, are you going to build up the elevation or is it where it is today? I'm sorry, sir. Are you going to raise the ground to um, be a higher elevation, or is, is it where raise the grade? What okay. we're, um, we're we're going because we have um, the road that comes in and the you know all of the existing conditions there. Yeah. So what what our plan is um, the um, the actual canopy we will raise that so it's higher and then keep the building so that we can have the visibility of both and so that we. Um, it will help with the visibility, um, the concerns that everybody had. And I think that when we went back and looked at the property, it was really, it really is quite overgrown with, um, with trees and, you know, it's, and shrubs. And so you really can't see it because of everything that's kind of obstructing it right now. But if you, mm -hmm. um, once that's cleared out and the landscaping is redone, we will be able to have visibility there, so. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's probably 40 or so trees there. That yeah. Were, and yeah. they're really quite large. Okay. So. That's all for me, sir. And then the only other thing that I think that we haven't touched on is that we've given you um, the projected sales tax numbers. So um, of what the what we're projecting based on the volumes that we're going to be doing, um, you know, this will be over four hundred thousand a year in sales tax. So yeah, you gave us those numbers, and uh, yeah, they look very promising. But whether they actually come to fruition, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> And typically when we're doing, I mean, obviously we rely on the numbers that we receive and the projections that we get from the, f in the from the, the uh, with the fuel and they, they, they spend, they have a, a lot that goes into projecting those numbers and, you know, I've been doing this for 36 years with building gas stations and I can tell you that those projections are, you know, again, it's not COVID, but, um, you know, people are still fueling their cars, <laughs> so. Yeah. Trustee Mills. Just one other question. Will um, the Hoffman Group still own the property or will you be selling it off to the companies? Mm, uh, selling it off to the to company. The, the, the gas station, the gas yeah. company. No. They'll still they will retain owners, ownership. Right. Okay. Anyone else with any other questions or concerns? I know last time we kind of gave you an idea that uh, maybe you shouldn't push on, but you pushed on. And you're back here again. We're persistent. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, quite frankly, I, I haven't, I'm not opposed at this point to let you go on to further uh, experiences with the Planning and Zoning Committee and go from there. Trustee Palafas. If your performa is accurate, I love it. And uh, it, it, anything would look better than what's there now. But, um, you know, it, it would be a good budget filler as long as, you know, what I mentioned, you know, in lieu of Trustee Mills' comments also is the appeal. And maybe, you know, that next round will show us some better renderings in terms of the pictures and the setback and- Yeah, we'll be, bit. next round we'll go ahead and with all the architectural will be done on it. So we'll look at the elevations and have a better perspective on it. I love, I love how you have the data points um, from experts because I, I'm not a gasoline expert or, or whatnot. I, I drive by there all the time. And as you know, I'm at Moretti's way too often. Um, I have teenagers, I love your pizza. So, uh, you know, that, that um, I think, it, it'll be interesting to see how the market reacts to, you know, a gas station being allocation. I hope you're right, so. Uh, Trustee Mills first, then Trustee Gata. Yeah, if you, you know, if you do get into the process, which at this time, it looks like you're going forward with it, Make sure you do have a few more renderings of how the how it will appear from the restaurants that are there now. We have the one street view right now, but make sure we have a view of what you would see from the other corners of that plaza. We will. It will be okay. part of it. I mean, uh, what we were trying to do with this it was really give you it's an idea of the grade difference right. and to make sure that you understood that, that it wasn't I really sitting in a hole. So yes, we will. Right, but that doesn't show the rest, the other restaurants that are there right now or anything. No, so. it, it was purely done for right. the reasons yeah. to try and yeah. get everybody to understand grade. That would be good. And to work with staff over the, uh, the, the traffic studies and everything. We will because I think it appears that they may have questions and concerns on that yet. We will. Like I said, we've already engaged the traffic consultants, so they've done a lot of homework on this already with us, so. Okay, good. Right. Go ahead, Trustee Gata. Yes, I, I agree with you as, as far as uh, I am for a station. In fact, I think even uh, the photographs that you even, as far as the layout, I think it all looks good. Uh, the only thing that I'm concerned about is that all of the other gas stations around here are anywhere from 40 to 70 cents more a gallon than any other locations around here. And the thing is that if, if you're thinking of putting this in here and to be competitive, fine. If you're going to be just like everybody else in here, and that's 40, 50, 70 cents a gallon more, I'm against putting another gas station anywhere in the village. Um, I think that, you know, um, how we've looked at, I know that the village of Hoffman Estates imposes a, a, an additional tax. And that, you know, I can't speak to why people are pricing the way they're pricing, um, but I do know that, 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 you know, to other villages, some other villages and counties don't have, the, they all don't have the same taxes. So I think that 
you know, that is looked at when they price it. And I, I like I said, I can't speak to why somebody is pricing the way they are. Um, I can only speak to, you know, when we look at it, we look at the, the state, the city, the county, all those taxes go in and that's how they price, so, okay? Okay. So, we'll see after we'll it comes back to us from the planning and the zoning. Okay. I think uh, Trustee Gate is trying to tell you that you should price more like the marathon further down uh, <laughs> in Thornton's than you should like Ricky Rockets. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Trustee Palafas. Last question, I promise. Um, are you gonna do any kind of marketing internally to the different business offerings? Like after a certain amount of, you know, gallons of gas, you know, like you get a free beef sandwich or yeah, or just, we you know, we so. always look at those types of opportunities, especially when we're um, involved with a situation like we are now, where um, you know, a la carte is you know having their brand in there. They can basically offer those types of things that other um, other people can't do. So yeah. you know, we do that quite a bit. So. I think that would differentiate your offering. Right if you could do that. Yep. All right, thank you for coming in front of us and uh, giving us a showing of what to expect. Okay. Let's move on to the new business, which is the second, is a request approval of the Barrington Square Town Center TIF. Reimbursement request number five in the amount of $4,703,954.84. Rachel? Kevin's going to take this one. Kevin's going to take it? Okay. Nice to see you guys again. I was just saying I, I haven't um, gotten to stand before you uh, here at a meeting since February, so I'm, I'm glad to be here again and to have some uh, things happening on the agenda here. Um, so this one uh, with, with the Barrington Square uh, TIF, the Higgins Hassel TIF uh, is is what we've done in the past. Um, the the developer agreement TIF note was approved back in 2012 with an amount not to exceed nine million dollars if they had reimbursable project costs. So over the past seven years, eight years now, um, the board has has increased that TIF note from zero to 5.6 million. Um, and, uh, and with this, this fifth submission, it's, it's the same kind of thing. They have about 4.7 million worth of, of TIF eligible costs. Um, the note though is governed, like I said, by the $9 million cap, um, but it's limited to 30% of the total project costs. Um, so if, if they have enough eligible costs uh, going up to the total project, uh, project costs, that's how much they can be reimbursed for. Um, so the proposed TIF note um, with, this, with this action would increase to uh, just over $7 million with all five reimbursement um, requests. Um, so that's what's before you tonight. Uh, the, the owner though, just a quick update on what's going on there, um, continues to market the, the for, former Burger King site, um, now the outlot between McDonald's and the new Bona. Uh, the Menard site, that back piece, um, although they, they haven't focused on that as much just because there seems to be more traction with the smaller sites. Uh, and then kind of deviating from, from where the owner has been uh, the whole time, they're also even considering selling the entire center now, um, which is, is different from what they had always um, said. It's, they have it out there, although they're not, you know, they're not pushing for it, but if somebody did wanna come by the center, um, they, they would at least entertain an offer, which like I said, is, is very different from where they had been before. Um, so that's, that's this item tonight. Any questions from anyone? Mayor. Kevin, uh, can you explain the, the TIF note? What if there isn't money to pay all this money back on the TIF note? What happens? Good point. So um, the note is, is, a, is a pay as you go, however much money it comes into the TIF. Um, if, if there's not enough money to pay it back uh, from the TIF, then it doesn't get paid back. Um, it it's only can be paid from the, the TIF fund. Is there enough money in the TIF fund now? Uh, no, and, no, and I don't remember offhand. So Rachel? currently we get about 300,000 of incremental taxes every year, and the formula is basically after any admin or legal expenses, which are minimal, um, the balance gets split 50-50. 
Um, so for example, last year there was a note payment of 182,000. Um, so that's, that's been where it's run, been running for the last couple of years. Currently we've paid off $487,000 of this note. <laughs> if, right, it, if they want to hit that $7 million, uh, they would really need to redevelop that, that Menards piece, certainly, that old Menards piece, and, and a couple of the outlots. And granted, the TIF was started in 2012, so it's, it's got till 2035. They got some time left, but they got to they gotta get moving on some of those There's things if they want to make their money back. Yeah. Trustee Plopis. Yeah, I just wanted to make mention that I'd love to see more increment. Um, so we could actually entertain paying them back. But at this, at the rate of increment growth right now, it'll take 60 years. <laughs> so um, this, in my mind, is an underperforming asset. So it, it, I it can't has, understand I mean, what they'd want to say. It has sell. generated $23 million. Uh, where's my number? $23 million of total project costs. Mm -hmm. Um, so when you look at, okay, where was the center and where is it now, um, it, the, the whole facade has been redone. That entire office building behind uh, the bowling alley was built. Um, the, the, obviously, the Bona was rebuilt. The, the McDonald's was rebuilt. And now they're doing that 7-Eleven um, all to the, to the tune of how much was paid out, Rachel? 400 and Right, almost five hundred thousand. Yeah. Almost five hundred thousand. Please don't, um, please don't hear me wrong. I'm not, I'm not saying the investment hasn't been valiant. Yeah. Um, I just think there's a lot of potential uh, to, you know, you know, to have growth. Yeah. And uh, it, it'd be nice to see that, you know, come to fruition. <clears throat> Did we have a motion and a second on this no. one? No, I'll make the motion. I'll second. Thank you. Any other questions regarding before we vote? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. All right, number three, request by DMG Mori USA Incorporated for a resolution supporting the Cook County Class B classification renewal application for property tax assessment purposes for the existing DMG Mori facility located at 2400 Huntington Boulevard. So moved. I'll second. Thank you. Uh, Kevin, you're taking this too? Yeah, you know what, I'll start, and, and there are representatives from DMG here that, that I'd like uh, to come up and speak if, if you'll hear them. Uh, just really quickly, though, um, back in 2008, when, when they first built, the board approved the resolution to support their 6B application. Um, as you know, 6Bs are, are pretty necessary in Cook County um, for an industrial user, um, and, and that's why that was done then. Um, this is a a 12-year renewal, um, you can renew once in Cook County and, and the county allows that as long as there's that resolution. I do wanna um, make an important change from the, uh, from the agenda item. I did say that um, there are a tenant in the building after completing a sale leaseback, but, but actually DMG has always been a tenant. They've never owned the site. McShane entered into a lease agreement with them in 2008 um, to, to, to build, um, but, but the current owner, uh, is in favor of this, um, <coughs> and uh, and I'll let them speak about you know passing on the savings to DMG to to be able to uh, reinvest. So if you guys want to come up uh, and speak, I'll let you explain a little bit more. Yeah. Could we have your name and address, please? Absolutely. First off, my name is John Sprenzel, and I represent DMG Mori with regards to this 6B renewal application. With me today, I've got three officers from uh, DMG Mori. Our first individual, I'm sorry, let me speak in the microphone, is Marlo Canaba. He's the chief technical officer for DMG Mori. We also have the business development general manager, Ms. Asuka Takahara, and then we have the senior tax accountant, uh, Mr. Troy Jackson. So first of all, I wanna thank you for giving us the opportunity. I wanna thank Kevin and his staff for coordinating this. We have the opportunity to present this uh, renewal request. Um, as Kevin mentioned, um, DMG Mori received, or the property that uh, DMG Mori occupies received a 6B incentive classification. Um, in, in times where commercial properties are shouldering a larger tax burden, um, we're seeking a renewal of this 6B application and um, which would expire this year. Uh, as Kevin mentioned, it's a 12-year program 
the first 10 years, you're assessed at 10% of, of the fair cash value of the property, and then it's ramped up in years 11 and 12 to 15 and 20% respectively. Uh, this property has, um, since, since taken occupancy, since DMG took occupancy in 2009, it has invested $3.5 million in improvements. There are a number of initiatives that DMG wants to continue to, I'm sorry, that wants to add to the building because of the, the, uh, fa the facets of their business, which is a cutting edge tech, uh, technological company that produces um, computer numerical uh, coded uh, machining, along with uh, some other items that I would like um, Ms. Takar to discuss, but also um, in the application, we identified seven uh, different initiatives that TMG, I'm sorry, DMG, sorry, the mask kind of got in the way there, uh, DMG Mori seeks to accomplish, but they cannot accomplish it without a 6B renewal. The tax, the taxes that would wear off, I'm sorry, the incentive that would wear off and cause the tax burden on DMG Mori would prohibit such um, ability to do so. So at this time, I wanted to introduce Ms. Takahara, and she'll provide a little bit of history of DMG Mori. Uh, they are a multinational company. Uh, besides being here in Hoffman Estates, they're in Japan, Brazil, and a number of other locations. Uh, she'll also discuss what's currently in the property right now. Um, and then followed by Ms. Takahara will be Mr. Kanaba, who will discuss in more in detail about the seven initiatives that DMG, DMG Mori seeks uh, to uh, perform if, if the 6B renewal is approved um, by the village um, in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. My name is Asuka Takahara. I'm the general manager of the business development group in uh, DMG Mori USA. Um, since we've moved into Hoffman Estates um, from our original locations in Rolling Meadows, our business has grown tremendously. Uh, we originally had approximately 90 employees uh, when we started off at Hoffman Estates, and we currently employ 212 employees at this current facility. Um, Why don't you move that mic down to you a little bit? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm a little bit shorter. Yeah. Here we go, okay. <laughs> um, since then, we've also seen tremendous amount of sales growth, which has allowed us to reinvest um, some of that additional cash flow back into the business, which is uh, what uh, Mr. Spentel has alluded to, which is uh, approximately $3.5 million of reinvesting into the current facility in Hoffman Estates. Some of those reinvestments include um, adding additional layers to the flooring uh, to facilitate the CNC uh, machine tools that we currently offer as a product line but we also have created what we call ASI labs, um, a mezzanine floor for our engineers. Um, additionally, some fewer investments that feed into more of our technology that we are investing in for increased automation. Uh, we pride ourselves in not only providing a product, but a solution to our customers, which includes more technological software-based solutions. So in doing so, what we do on a frequent basis is we have annual trade shows, local shows. Um, one of them is named Innovation Days, which we invite approximately uh, appro 2,000 customers to our location. And we provide demonstration, we provide them tours, we provide them it, with a very detailed um, look at the, the technology that we're investing in and the newer models that are coming out of our factories. Um, with that, we also partnership with some of the local businesses that have since moved into the Hoffman Estates area. Um, a lot of them are our customers and suppliers as well. Um, some of them are uh, NSK, which is right around the corner, as well as uh, Trump, which is next door. I actually saw their building being built while we were still occupying the Hoffman Estates building. And there's a lot of synergy between our suppliers as well. So they, they, there's definitely a leverage that they benefit off of our trade shows as we do crossover um, visitations uh, for some of our customers as well. So we really appreciate the opportunity that you consider us for this 6B renewal for some of the future investments that we have planned. And for that, um, I'd like to call our executive, Chief Technical Officer Marlo Canava. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And good evening. Um, I think I was here about uh, 12, 13 years ago talking to you. And uh, we shared, uh, much like uh, uh, the first initiative this evening, we shared our plans and we shared our vision. 
And uh, I would hope that you would agree that the last uh, uh, 12 years have been a great partnership in this area. Um, as uh, uh, was just mentioned, uh, not only the technology that we represent to the market, uh, but there's been other, other companies and suppliers that have moved into the area. Uh, one that we did not mention previously was Big Kaiser that uh, came in shortly after us. Um, with that has come uh, many initiatives. Uh, one is attracting new uh, young talent into our industry. Uh, we meet uh, regularly hosting uh, high schools, even uh, high schools uh, in the, the Hoffman Estates area, um, as well as colleges, uh, we invite them in. Um, one mention that uh, was just noted, Innovation Days. Innovation Days, uh, not only do we bring in 2,000 customers uh, throughout the, not only the United States, but the world, uh, into this area, but in addition to that is probably another 1,000 suppliers that come to this area uh, for that uh, four-day event once a year. Uh, this year we made the news, um, notoriety, uh, certainly uh, maybe uh, not always uh, welcomed initially, but we had pulled out of a large trade show in downtown Chicago. One of the reasons why we did that was because of this event itself, Innovation Days. We have been able to grow this event um, we started in uh, 2004 with Innovation Days. We have about tripled uh, the size of this, the scale, and now it is certainly an international event here in Hoffman Estates in the manufacturing community. Um, we want to continue to grow. Technology is changing. Uh, Industry 4.0 uh, is, is certainly permeating manufacturing and the high technology of additive manufacturing, much like 3D printing, it's, I mean, technology continues to change, and, but we need, in order to advance, we need to be able to have these funds available uh, with a, a 6B renewal. Um, we think that it's, it's uh, not only uh, good for our company, but uh, we would hope that you would agree that it's good for Hoffman Estates, that we keep Hoffman Estates as a focal point in the manufacturing technology community. It's important, FANUC is a, is a great supplier to us. We have uh, Trump, we have Big Kaiser, um, and uh, all of us share some of the same clientele uh, that come into the area. So I think that is important. Uh, we have 26 facilities around the United States. Um, when we moved to Hoffman Estates, our goal was to truly make Hoffman Estates our US headquarters. We continue to evolve that. Um, within those 26 facilities around the United States, we have three regions. We plan to move forward and make our facility in Hoffman Estates not only our headquarters, but also the headquarters for our central region, uh, which has 10 offices uh, throughout uh, the central United States as well. So we have a lot of growth. Uh, right now we have <coughs> Uh, slated about uh, 1.8 million dollars uh, in renovations that will allow those. Um, we are also, uh, in addition to um, reorganizing our facility and restructuring it for the Central Region Headquarters for the United States, uh, we are expanding our automation division uh, and looking to expand that into all of North America. So uh, supporting our, our colleagues in Canada, Mexico and Brazil as well. So that's another initiative. Um, we have uh, recently, uh, you may have seen in the news, the DMG Mori, uh, we just were awarded a major contract with the US Navy. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, in order to do that, we've had to um, uh, revitalize some of our IT to make it extremely, extremely secure. Um, and uh, very specific tests uh, that needed to be approved and uh, sanctioned by the US government. Uh, my point is, is that as we continue to move forward, not only in executing this uh, contract with the, with the US Navy, but we are already are getting much more exposure into the, the US government, military, and space. Um, and we will uh, certainly continue to do that, and it will certainly take, again, more infrastructure. So um, 
DMG Mori, uh, and, and that's an interesting uh, point in itself. When I came before you in, in uh, 2008, our company was Mori Seiki, a company headquartered in Japan. Uh, within 2009, we entered a relationship uh, that has grown to the point where we have now acquired a uh, controlling interest of a company, DMG, uh, headquartered in uh, Bielefeld, Germany, so hence the name DMG Mori. Um, within a year after moving into the facility, we expanded greatly. We brought over their facility, which was uh, in Itasca, brought them over into Hoffman Estates, and we have continued to grow. Uh, in 2009, we are a formidable player in, in global CNC machine tool technology. Today, we are the largest machine tool builder in the world as DMG Mori. So again, we, we ask that uh, with the initiatives that we have uh, in the business that we continue to develop, we ask for your support. And we would like to remain here uh, in Hoffman Estates with not only our facility, but continuing to move more and more operations here to Hoffman Estates. So we thank you for your, your time and, and uh, appreciate your consideration. What your original assessment was on the property? Um, well, I guess it depends if you're looking for the 2020 assessment or the 2019 assessment. I'm looking for the original 2008 assessment. The 2008 assessment. Um, I don't have that in my notes, but I can provide that at a, at a later time. Uh, go ahead and tell me what the assessment is now. <laughs> okay. The current assessment is at $4,976,585, which equates to a fair cash value of $24,750,000. Or, I'm sorry, just, just about $24,600. 24, 24, Last year, the property was valued by the assessor's office and consequently by the Cook County Board of Review at $7.6 million. So clearly a, quite a discrepancy in valuation. Um, now obviously there's a two-step process. You file with the assessor, you file with the Board of Review. So what the 2020 assessment is right now not, might not necessarily be the final 2020 assessment, but um, that's where it currently is at this moment. I can okay. provide you that 2008 valuation. Do you have an idea as to how many, how much taxes were for you at all back in 2008, 2009 area? The tax was approximately in about 150,000, um, and that's currently, as of 2018, the tax bill was 100, just under 170,000. This year, um, because of the ramp up for the 11th year being assessed at 15% of its fair cash value, it was at two. Th oh, I'm sorry, 279,108. And property taxes. Yes, Trustee Palafas. Um, <clears throat> two things. Uh, I know we've never done an extension like this before, uh, so it's you know a new precedent. If we uh, there's a motion and a second to approve. Um, my thought is, uh, DMG Mori has succeeded in what we were hoping Sears would do you know, by bringing a lot of their peer corporations around them um, in a different place of the village than where we have Sears. But uh, secondly, I think even if we were to play it out as we didn't offer the extension, whoever comes next into that building would still ask for it, and most likely it would be granted. So um, I'm for it in the sense of I see the merits. My only question is uh, the promise for the seven items for improvement, like how do we get uh, between now and if we approve this at a board meeting, how do we get guarantees, you know, so it's not just um, promises. Promises, thank you. I'm glad you said it instead of me. Uh, <laughs> is there something that, you know, I hate to use the word binding, but I'll go there and uh, you know, maybe the lawyers in the room could help me with this, but is there something that has teeth to it that guarantees those promises? Actually, under the uh, the draft resolution, there are there is some teeth in one of the whereas provisions, actually number seven, 
and that uh, discusses that the village receives certain assurances from DMG relating to the continued operation of DMG business in the village and converts the property to a North American and Central Region headquarters by December 31st of 2026. Those were two of the seven initiatives, but um, you know, that's certainly, you know, DMG Mori is not looking to just provide empty promises. It's, uh, as uh, Mr. Kanaba mentioned back in 2007, um, they provided significant improvements um, and provided those promises in order to receive the initial 6B. They're in the same position today. And if, you know, if there is a revision that needs to be made to the draft resolution to um, satisfy the um, uh, uh, satisfy the village, um, you know, we're in favor of that. I, I didn't want you to hear it negatively. Sometimes I'm bad at that. Um, <laughs> no. Well, well, I just, and I wasn't alluding to the fact that you would do two and bail on the other five. Uh, really, I was just, you know, more curious around the, uh, you know, and I know you guys have been great partners up there, and uh, what you've done is fantastic. It's just, you know, we owe a responsibility to the taxpaying residents and other businesses of this town uh, for the actions that this this uh, forum takes. So that's more why I'm asking. Oh, absolutely, I understand that. And if, if there's any sort of agreement, you know, obviously that would be well received and we, you know. Okay, that's all for me, sir. Thank you. Anyone else with any other uh, questions up here? Mary, you had your hand raised a long time ago. Do you? They answered it. Okay. <laughs> uh, we have a motion and a second, I believe. Yes. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it, and uh, it moves on. We thank you, committee, and um, enjoy your evening. You're welcome. Uh, fourth is a request approval of a resolution authorizing the village president to enter into a purchase and sale agreement with ABY Golf Incorporated for the site of 7585 East Golf Road. So I'll move. Second. I'll second. Thank you. Uh, anybody have any questions regarding this? Go ahead. I'll stand here, but Art and I can field some questions. Um, just real quick background. Um, uh, in, in 2020, uh, earlier this year, um, pre-COVID, it feels like a lifetime ago, um, uh, I was contacted by, by a broker asking about the site. And, uh, and we weren't under contract with anybody, and, and he said his client um, was, a, a, was a, a developer wanting to do a fast food uh, restaurant. Um, so uh, Art and I worked together to prepare uh, this purchase and sale agreement, um, a one that I, I think is a little bit better than the one we had with Sterling. Um, and, uh, and just some of those key points are in the report, but, but just briefly, um, the purchase price would be $800,000 at closing. Um, they would develop with a, uh, a Popeye's Louisiana kitchen drive through restaurant. Um, so from a tax standpoint, that's, that's a, a, a really great generator. Um, and then the closing would occur within, within six months. Within that time, uh, they plan to come forward to the Planning and Zoning Commission, get their site plan approval from the board then, um, and, and then they would like to close um, quickly after that. So they're, they're wanting to move on this, and, um, and, and they're excited about it. So like I said, Art, Art or myself will take questions if you got them. Mayor. Yeah, we've been around the block on this property several times. Are they putting up any earnest money or anything? Or is this just another one of these, well, yeah, we want to do it, and then... Yeah, so, so there'd, be, there'd be a $25,000 earnest money deposit. Um, and they, they've already had have initial plans into planning. Um, that was one of the things before we, we really spent a lot of time with even this agreement. We wanted to make sure it worked on the site. Um, that, that you could kind of squeeze a, conceivably squeeze a, a fast food restaurant on there. And, and they, they went through a round of comments that we gave back to them. They came back with some adjustments and, and it does. So they, they've already spent some time on a site plan. Um, and like I said, they're wanting to move, but they are gonna put down some earnest money. Okay, good. Trustee Mills. Is there any contingency on this to the plan being approved? Uh, yes, okay. that, that's one of the things before they close, they would like plan approval. I would think so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, not only final approval on the site plan, but we also have to <laughs> we, we we have to replat the lot 
um, it was split apart for st Sterling, sure. and uh, now we have to consolidate it again. And uh, we negotiated, uh, to the mayor's point, we negotiated very heavily on them taking some action, otherwise we were going to, you know, close down the contract and move on to somebody else. And um, I, I think, do we give them nine months at the absolute most and six months for them to have all their plans done? And uh, so, yeah, we, Mayor, we were very much aware uh, of that and we tried as best we can to uh, negotiate uh, those issues. Anyone else? Yes, Trustee Plonfus. I, I think this is the type of uh, use we were hoping for, mm -hmm. um, wh which is good. Um, aside from the fact that I'm a big fan of Popeyes, especially <laughs> the spicy chicken, and I don't have to drive to Palatine now to get it. Not that I ever do that, but I'm just saying. Um, you know, and it's in a good location. I think it'll be a good front. You know, it'll add other chicken options to KFC and, and uh, Chick-fil-A uh, right on that corridor. So, um, I'm excited, and I think uh, the earnest money and art, which you drew out here with Kevin, is uh, it's a good contract, from my opinion. So, well done. Anyone else? All right, we have a motion to second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. All right, that leads us to reports uh, for information only. First is the Planning Division monthly report. Any questions, anyone? That'll be received and filed. Second is the Code Enforcement Division Monthly Report. Any questions from anyone? <coughs> That'll be received and filed. The third is the Economic Development and Tourism Monthly Report. Any questions? Yes, Kevin. Can I just make one, one quick plug? Um, for any business owners in town who are listening, uh, we do have a, a, a quick like five minute survey trying to understand the impacts COVID has had upon them. Um, so far, I've got about 85 responses. Um, and that's something I'm going to correlate, uh, or I'm going to gather all of the responses, uh, and, and I'll bring them to you guys in, in October. Um, but if there's any businesses listening, please go on our, on the economic development page, um, and, and take that survey. It would be greatly appreciated. That's all. Thank you. Thank you okay. That'll be received and filed. President's report. I wait, wait for the board being. Chairman Stanton. Okay. We have nothing in other or items in review today, so a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Good evening. I'd like to call the General Administration and Personnel Committee for the Village of Hoffman Estates on September 14, 2020. May I have a roll call, please? Chairman Arnett. Present. Vice Chairman Mills. Present. Trustee Stanton. I'm present. Trustee Newell. I'm present. Trustee Palafis. Present. Trustee Gaeta. Present. Mayor McClough. Present. Thank you. We do have a quorum. If I can get a motion <coughs> for approval of minutes for August 3rd, 2020. So moved. Second. Anybody have any corrections, additions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Request approval for motion uh, approval of minutes for September 8th, 2020, the special meeting. So moved. Second. Any corrections or additions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. We have one item under new uh, old business, discussion regarding the Halloween event. And I see that Suzanne had typed us up a little uh, paragraph here. So you wanna go ahead and continue, Suzanne? Yes, indeed. Uh, as you know, this is a follow-up item to the committee's discussion last week regarding the uh, most pressing local government issue of 2020, <laughs> Halloween trick-or-treating. So um, there are two uh, kind of sections to this. The first is what Trustee Arnett just referenced, um, which is a draft um, newsletter article. Um, based on the committee's discussion last week, we had um, talked through the idea of um, allowing trick-or-treating between 3 and 6 p.m. So the, the idea of the citizen article is to um, provide information to the residents about um, potentially an event that we're looking at holding at the Now Arena, as well as um, trick-or-treating hours and some guidance on um, how to trick-or-treat safely if they do um, indeed decide to do that. Um, so if you'd like to look at that um, and just let me know if you have any feedback, that would be um, great. Not necessarily tonight, but you can email me or uh, anything if you'd like. Um, the second piece of it is the event that we were discussing out at the Now Arena. Um, over the last week, uh, we've been working with the Now Arena staff to sort of finalize, well, to sort of think up what, what the best option could be for that. 
Um, I know that uh, Trustee Mills had, had kind of proposed a, a two-part event that would have a drive-through section and then um, move to the, the drive-in movie at the end. Um, in discussions with Ben over at the Now Arena, um, it, was, it was determined that that was maybe not the best option just because of traffic backups and, and other things. So um, the working idea that we have now is a, um, it's about a two, two and a half hour kind of experience. Um, ben thinks that they could get about 400 cars um, in, um, into the parking lot there at the Sears, I mean, excuse me, now arena. <laughs> um, and so the idea would be for families to come in costume um, and it would be a, a, a vehicle event. So you would stay in your car, they would just park you once. Um, they've been in contact with um, some character actors who would dress up then and kind of circulate um, between the cars and you know, interact with the families um, while they're in their cars or next to their cars. Um, it would be COVID safe, um, everyone um, wearing masks and, and distanced. Um, so it would be, be you know, good from that perspective. Um, and then at the end, there would be um, some sort of family-friendly movie running about 30 to 45 minutes. Um, so something short of a, of a full-length full, full -length feature. But um, conceptually, that's, that's the event. And then um, they would be able to move cars out because the drive-in um, does have a, an adult-themed um, night planned for Halloween. Um, so this would be an, an earlier option. It would provide a, uh, a trick-or-treating alternative for families, um, and then they would be out by 6 or 6.30 um, and headed home. So. I think that's great. I think that's a great idea. And then if they don't want to go to the Now Arena, they can choose the other option and go trick-or-treating on, on the safety protocols that we have. I think that's great, and thank you for following up on that. Anybody have any questions? Trustee Mills? Wasn't there some something here about an attendance fee? Uh, what are we talking, like $5 a car or something like that? Uh, the, the, um, the amount contemplated was $10, which is um, what the Park District is charging for their event. Yeah. Um, and that would help us to offset some of the costs. Um, Pre-registration would be required. Mm -hmm. uh, what we've heard from the staff at the Now Arena is that, generally speaking, if you um, require registration but don't have a fee associated, they get a lot of no-shows and people who hold the yeah. reservations um, and then don't end up attending the event. No, I think this um, is a very, that's a very nominal fee for family entertainment for the one night. I agree. Yeah. I think it's great. Thank you for following through on that. Trustee Gato? Yeah, thank you again for putting this together. The, the, uh, I just happen to disagree as far as charging, right? Uh, the thing is that we've had so many things canceled for the whole year. And it, even what I said last week, as far as with the kids, right? I mean, two important things, Halloween and Christmas, right? And we've canceled everything else in between. I don't, I don't think we should charge anything for it. Uh, let them come and let them enjoy. That's all I have. Well, the only reason is like what she said, people might make reservations, hold a spot, and then not show because it didn't cost them anything. And someone who really wants to come doesn't get a chance to, to get in. I, I agree with that. But you know what, though, for 2 or $3 or $5, if somebody's going to not show up, they're just not going to show up. I mean, if it was $25 or $50, that'd be a different yeah, story. Yeah, that'd be different. But uh, that, okay, that's whatever. just my opinion. I don't think we should charge anything. Trusted Pilafis. Kind of the uh, soft medium between <laughs> the two ideas that uh, Michael and Karen are sharing. Because I, I agree with Karen, Michael, that if you don't, if people don't have skin in the game, sometimes they don't show up. But what we've done is, when we've charged with other commissions, is we've given them that money back in terms of like a food coupon or if there's food trucks or whatever out there um, oh. or some type of candy rebate or uh, things like that. And that, that's a nice way to zero out, you know, the, um, the cost, but also keep them committed. You know, I'm just, just an idea of where I've seen it successful in other places, but uh, just, just two cents to consider. I think that's an excellent idea. So this way we could, could charge, but then give it back to them in some way with the food or popcorn or whatever. Great idea, trustee full office. That's all I have. Okay, anybody else? Aren't, we, a, aren't we actually, if you give you know $10 as the fee, you're giving them candy that's gonna, probably going to cost about that much anyway. So it's the same difference, really. Yeah. 
Is this something we'd have to work with the NOW Arena on? Yeah, so, so a lot of this is still um, in the works too. We're trying to look at what the best option would be for um, what system to use for registration um, and, and, and what the charge would be and how we'd process that, process that through our finance um, kind of software. Um, this isn't really something that their systems are set up to do. Um, so we're looking at potentially um, an Eventbrite or something of that nature um, to handle the registrations. So all of this is still um, kind of in flux. So. Okay. Is there enough time to get this done by Halloween? I believe so. I mean, the bulk of it is, is just what the drive-in theater does. And so the Now Arena staff has been working with the, the um, folks who run the drive-in um, to sort of work out how this will all happen. Um, and, so, and so Ben seemed to indicate that it was um, not gonna be a problem, the timing. Great, anybody else? Do we need to do a motion to this for this? I think uh, maybe do a motion to proceed with. Yeah, I'll make a motion. We proceed with uh, directing staff to um, uh, work on the Halloween event at the Now Arena for October 31st. I'll second. I'll second. I'll second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you very much for Sam. Okay. We have no one new item under new business request approval of to dispose of the village records that have exceeded their staff required retention period. So moved. Does anybody want to add to that? Mayor? I have one question. Do we actually have building permit address residence from 1959? <laughs> Still in the records? We do. Surprisingly, oh. we do. We're very good at keeping like documents. historical now. <laughs> Maybe we should keep that one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Okay, we do have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Right, yeah. We will go ahead and move on to reports for information only. Number one is the cable TV monthly report. Okay, we'll receive and file that. Number two is the human resources management monthly report. Where else that? Okay, receive and file that one as well. Number three, legislative operations and outreach monthly report. Anything to add, Suzanne? We will go ahead and receive and file that. Uh, president's report? Well, since the village clerk reminded me there is no president's report in the special meeting, <laughs> I'll do it right now. There's a couple things they want to talk about. One, the 20 cent, 2020 census is still going on until September 30th, 2020. It's critically important that we all get counted in Hoffman Estates to ensure funding and representation. It's never too late. Complete the census at www. 2020census.gov, www.2020census.gov. And the Hoffman Estates uh, free curbside branch pickup fall program will begin the week of Monday, September 21st. This program is for residents covered by the village refuse collection contract. Routes and dates have been established for various sections of the community. You can visit www.hoffmanestates.org slash branch pickup, www hoffmanestates.org slash branch pickup for more information. Also, I'm in the receipt of a letter from the uh, village president of the village of Villa Park. Re August 10th storm recovery mutual aid. Dear Mayor McLeod, on behalf of the village of Villa Park and its residents, I want to express our gratitude for your assistance in our recovery from recent windstorm. The chipping crew is extremely helpful in expediting the cleanup of the extensive amount of brush and tree damage that resulted from this severe storm, which registered EF1 tornado wind speeds, generated over 170 calls to police and fire reporting down Libs and Block streets, and left over 8,000 Villa Park residents without power. David Oates, Dave Giatris, Kyle Dees, Ken Edwards, and Art Bios were very professional and provided our town here in Villa Park with much needed support during this extended operation. Thank you again for providing this assistance to Illinois Public Works Mutual Aid Network. Great job, and that's why we have Mutual Aid and Public Works also, because the next time it could be us getting help from uh, Villa Park. On Wednesday, September 9th, they did participate in the uh, state and local officials call with the, with the White House, and at seven o'clock that evening, participate in the uh, Northwest Municipal Conference September board meeting. And on um, September 11th, we had the 
National League of Cities Transportation Committee meeting. And, and um, today, we had a call with Tony Preckwinkle, the Northwest and South Suburban Municipal Conference mayor, conference call with President Preckwinkle with all the mayors from the Northwest and South Suburban areas. We had a very interesting Plum Farms discussion this afternoon. And later this afternoon, I met with uh, RTA board member Canty, Rod Pace, who's on the uh, Metro board, and myself, who are on the Pace board. Canty is from Arlington Heights, Rod is from Hanover Park, and of course, I'm from Hoffman Estates. We're the local representatives on those service boards. So we're going to meet on a regular basis to talk about ideas to help uh, transportation in our area. Um, I'm very excited about that. I think it's a great idea. And that's all I got. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I see nothing in other or items in review. Can we have a motion for an adjournment? So moved. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion has been passed. We are adjourned. I'd like to call to order the Transportation and Road Improvement Committee for September 14th, 2020. The secretary, please call the roll. Chairman Mills. Present. Vice Chairman Stanton. Present. Trustee Arnett. Present. Trustee Newell. Present. Trustee Palafas. Present. Trustee Gata. Present. Mayor McClough. Present. Thank you. I look for a motion to approve the minutes of August 3rd. So moved. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any corrections, additions? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Under new business this, side, this evening, number one, request approval of an intergovernmental agreement to recertify a quiet zone at the Canadian National Rail Crossing on Shoe Factory Road. I'll so move. move, second. We have a motion and a second. Mr. Henke, did you wish to address that? Yes, thank you. Briefly, uh, this is a recertification of the quiet zone that was initially established in 2008. It's required by the Federal Railroad Administration to revisit them on a periodic basis. As we did with the first round, uh, Vernon Hills will be the lead agency. They have contracted with an engineering firm to perform the risk analysis that's required by Federal Railroad uh, railroad in order to uh, consider the cert recertification. Um, our cost is uh, approximately uh, a little bit less than $4,000. We are rec recommending that to allow for some contingency as there are, are expenses that may be incurred uh, not to exceed $4,500. There are 13 total agencies participating, including uh, Lake County, who's doing um, their obligation through a separate memorandum of understanding, uh, separate from the IGA, but it's an equal share to the other participating communities. The study itself should take uh, about a month or two to complete, and then it would be submitted for review. Thank you, any questions? Nice to see you again, Mike. Yeah. Likewise, <laughs> thank you. Couldn't even see him with the pillar there. <laughs> um, if there are no other questions or comments, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it. Thank you. Next item under new business, uh, review of request for removal of designated hand handicapped parking space on Dan Danbury Place. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, did you wish to address this also? Yes, again, just briefly, uh, we do periodic reviews of uh, the need for uh, handicapped spaces that have been designated on public streets. Uh, in this case, it was discovered that the original requester uh, no longer lives at that address. Um, just as a, a note, we have had instances though where we've taken signs out because people have moved, someone else comes back in and it's, it's reinstalled again. So the, the process of installing and uh, removing and reinstalling is really uh, not that difficult. It's a matter of uh, task for public works to um, do that uh, do that installation or removal. Uh, there is construction going on uh, on Danbury currently, uh, so the sign is not actually in place right now. Um, but this is uh, part of our regular uh, routine uh, review of these locations. We do uh, request that people let us know if they should move or their circumstances no longer uh, require the handicap sign. Uh, or again, we do uh, reviews of um, records to determine if the need still exists. Okay. Any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it. Thank you, Mr. Hankey. Um, thank you. 
under reports for information only, we do have the transportation division monthly report. Anything you need to highlight out of that? Not this evening. Thank you. Any questions? Seeing none, we will take then mark that as uh, received and filed. Did the president think of anything else to report? Nothing else. Okay. Madam Chair. <laughs> I see nothing else to come before this committee tonight, so I look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. The ayes have it. We are adjourned. Thank you. Anybody need a break? Are we all okay? We're all We're okay. okay. We're all good okay. for now. Thanks. Okay, I'd like to call to order the special village board meeting of September 14th, 2020. Can you call the roll, Madam Clerk? Trustee Gaeta? Present. Trustee Arnett? Present. Trustee Mills? Present. Trustee Newell? Present. Trustee Palafis? Present. Trustee Stanton? Present. Mayor McLeod? Present. Can everybody please rise? Trustee Gaeta, you want to lead us in the Pledge of the Flag? Thank you, Trustee Gata. This meeting, as all our meetings, is being telecast live on our cable channel. It will be re-shown again throughout the month on our cable channels. Move on to item number three, planning and zoning commission reports. Chairperson Combs and Vice Chair Greg Ring are here. <laughs> Got two for one. How about that? Uh, planning and zoning commission recommended for approval a request by Charles and Barbara Barrett owners for a variation from section 9-5-3-D-5 of the zoning code to allow a patio to the setback nine feet from the corner lot line, side lot line, excuse me, instead of the minimum required 26 feet for the property located at 1230 Hunters Ridge West with two conditions. Voting was nine A's, two absent. Chair would accept a motion. So moved. Second. We have a motion to second. Any questions from anybody on this item? Seeing no questions, um, can you call the roll, Madam Clerk? Trustee Gaeta? Uh, yeah, aye. Trustee Arnett? Aye. Trustee Mills? Aye. Trustee Newell? Aye. Trustee Palafis? Aye. Trustee Stanton? Aye. Mayor McLeod? Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Move on to item number four, additional business request board consideration of a recommendation from the General Administration Personnel Committee regarding direction and proceeding with a Halloween event. So moved. I'll second. Motion a second. This is again for the hours of three to six and uh, we're working with the NOW Arena to uh, figure out the details of the event for uh, October 31st and the um, recommendations if people are going door to door trick or treating. We do have a motion and a second. Um, any discussion? Uh, a slight yes. discussion. I don't know how to vote on this because I'm in favor of the uh, <laughs> project that's in front of the now arena, but I still don't like the door-to-door -door stuff. Well, that's a dilemma. It is a dilemma. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna go like this, eh. <laughs> <laughs> Hold present. Can we do two parts? Like the first one in the now arena and then the second one is the trick or treating, or no? This well, one? last week we did the hours. Yeah. Yeah. So if we, we take the hours that. out, because hours weren't discussed at all during GAP, right? And just do the now arena. That's what the motion was for yeah. tonight. Was uh, for the event at, at the now arena. Right. Was it, or was it for the hours? No, it was no, for the hours. Were last the hours were last. We, we, we did, did vote. Okay, okay. all right. Last well, then I'm, I'm fine. Then you're okay. okay. See, I'm here for you. You solved everything, Bev. You did. You're amazing. I try my best. And sometimes <laughs> it's a good thing it's you stayed. <laughs> So we do have a motion and a second. Can you call the roll, Madam Clerk? Trustee Gaeta? Aye. Trustee Arnett? Aye. Trustee Mills? Aye. Trustee Newell? Aye. Trustee Palafis? Aye. Trustee Stanton? Aye. Mayor McLeod? Aye. Motion carried. The chair would gladly accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. I'll second. second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? See no discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. We are adjourned. Good night. Have a hallelujah.